Sox is here today for a physical exam. Sox is a 10-year-old mixed-breed dog. We've been treating her for a disease called Cushing's disease, which is a common hormone disease in older dogs. We diagnosed Sox with this disease about six months to a year ago, and we've been treating her successfully on medications, and she's here today so that we can do a physical exam on her and run some blood work on her to make sure that she's responding uh, to the medications as well as she can because we want to keep her healthy and happy and active for the rest of her life. Some of the things that we're going to check socks for is I'm going to look in her eyes to make sure that she doesn't have um, anything wrong with her eyes. It's very common for older dogs to get dry eye and they can develop ulcers so we want to make sure that her eyes look beautiful, which they do. Um, we also want to check her teeth. Older dogs can have a significant amount of tartar buildup on their teeth and it's very important that we check that for her because with her hormonal disease that she has, or Cushing's disease, she can become um, not able to fight off infections and if she gets an infection in her teeth that can spread throughout her body really quickly. We're going to feel for all of her lymph nodes which is going to tell us whether or not she's got any infections going on. And while I'm feeling for all that, I'm also going to feel for her body to make sure that there's no lumps or bumps or um, her, there's, there's nothing that's abnormal or painful. Um, I'm going to feel her tummy to make sure that that feels normal and that she's not painful. And um, we're going to feel down her legs to make sure that there aren't any lumps or bumps that she has and she feels pretty darn good right now. Sox is a 10-year-old dog, and we consider that a middle to older age dog for her size. Smaller dogs tend to live longer, so it's not surprising that we can have a 16-year-old smaller dog, although larger dogs tend to live to be about 12 years old. And just like when people go to the doctor for yearly exams, when dogs go to the doctor for yearly exams and they're older, maybe greater than eight years old, we usually run blood work on them to make sure that things that we can't look at, like liver and kidney um, and some of the internal organs, to make sure they're all functioning normally. One of the other things we look for in older dogs, too, is whether they have painful joint diseases. And one of the ways that I did that, uh, when Socks walked in the exam room, I looked to see how she was walking and I'll feel down her spine and along her hips to see if she's painful because we do see a lot of arthritis in older dogs. So we want to make sure that we recognize that in these dogs so we can treat them appropriately with pain medications and anti-inflammatory medications so they can lead active and healthy and pain-free lives as much as possible. The other thing that we see in older dogs is the development of heart problems. So one of the things that I'm going to do today with socks is actually listen to her heart and her lungs. And in dogs, those are located, the heart is located right behind the elbows and her lung fields go up towards her spine from there. And so I can listen to her with our stethoscope just like they do in people to see if her heart sounds normal. So we listen for murmurs or irregularities in heartbeat and I listen to her lungs to make sure they sound clear and that we don't hear th any abnormal sounds. The other thing that um, larger dogs um, almost consistently get over time is arthritis and they will develop this most commonly in their hips but it's something that we see in almost every older large dog. So that's something to be on the lookout for and it's something that we can treat with pain relievers to again keep them pain free and as happy as we possibly can. If your dog is fairly healthy they should go in for a full and thorough physical exam at least once yearly and that probably should be combined with general wellness blood screening. If your dog has a disease occurring, for instance Cushing's disease like Sox does, or if they have diabetes, or if they are under treatment for hip disease, or if they're on any medications, they should be going to the veterinarian at least twice yearly. We recommend that dogs be vaccinated every three years with rabies and a combination vaccine. It's probably not necessary to do it more frequently unless you take them to a kennel that requires that vaccine be given. Pets are creatures of habit, and it's really important to watch older animals closely. 
So a change in any kind of behavior, like eating behavior, drinking behavior, um, elimination behavior, any of those changes become really important when we're looking at older pets because oftentimes it signals the start of a serious disease. We've been talking about uh, problems that older dogs have and now we're going to focus on our uh, very important older cats. And this is Stee. He is a 12-year-old domestic short hair cat. And some people think 12 years old is old for a cat, but I'm going to remind you that it's really not because a lot of cats live to be 20. So even though you may have a 14 or 15 year old cat, they're older, that's for sure, but they're certainly not uh, so aged that we don't want to consider their quality of life and examine them and try to treat them for things that we can treat them for to keep them happy and healthy because we have many 20 and 22 year old cats out there living very happy lives. Again, it's very important to have your cat checked at least yearly by a veterinarian, especially over the age of eight. There is a very common hormonal disease that cats can get called hyperthyroidism, and it's something that we see in cats that are older than eight, and it's something that your veterinarian can check for very easily once a year with a blood test. One of the things that happens with that disease is that the thyroid glands in cats can be enlarged. And so one of the things that I do for all of my older cats as part of their exam is actually feel their thyroid glands to see if they feel big. And if they do, that'll tell me that maybe hyperthyroidism is a problem that we would, we would be looking for in this cat. So that's one difference that we have between our older cat and our, and our older dog exams. As you can see, Steve's a little bit tubby. He's probably got a few extra pounds on him. And just like in people, uh, we don't want to let our, our cats, and cats have a, a special problem with this, we don't want to let our cats get overweight because they develop the same problems that people do in developing type 2 diabetes. So you want to make sure that you palpate along or feel along their spine to see whether or not um, they, they have good muscle development, which we want them to have. And as always, we're asking our owners uh, questions about their appetite and drinking, but in cats, one of the things that can lead us to suspect that there might be a weakness problem is whether or not they still jump up on the sofa or jump up on ledges. Cats like to jump, and when they stop doing that, oftentimes it tells us that there's a problem. Tooth disease in cats is just as important as it is in dogs, so we want to make sure that we look in their mouth. Um, very often cats can have significant ulcers um, and things going on in their mouth that we may not have any signs for except if we look in their mouth. So it's pretty important to do a good mouth exam um, on our older cats. We're going to be feeling for lymph nodes. We're going to be feeling along Steve's body for uh, any lumps or bumps. Um, we're going to feel in his stomach. Another very common uh, disease that cats get is renal failure. Their kidneys can fail. And we actually can feel cat kidneys because they've got a very long abdomen and they don't have a lot of musculature at the top of it. So we can actually feel their kidneys. We also may want to run yearly blood work on, on older cats, which I recommend, again, to check for their thyroids but also their kidney levels. We palpate the abdomen to make sure the bladder feels normal. We want to feel the stomach and feel the bladder. Cats can have significant problems with bladder stones. And we want to listen to them just like we do with our dogs. So cats can develop heart murmurs over time. They can also develop arrhythmias. These can be signs um, of hyperthyroidism, uh, which again is very common in cats and it's something we don't want to miss in them. So we want to listen to their heart carefully to see if they have any murmurs, they have any irregular heart beats, and make sure that they are breathing normally. As our pets age, their medical needs change. Signs that you may think are just those of normal aging could be significant and could signal the onset of severe disease. I would recommend that you take your older pet to the veterinarian at least yearly and report immediately any changes in behavior or eating habits that you notice.